this computer. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Latanya Smith, um, founder, CEO of Speak Life to Youth and Children International, or SLIC, S-L-Y-C, International. And today we are rolling out our first class for our college preparation and technical trade school preparation program. And today I have the delight of introducing uh, one of my favorite people, even though she wasn't one of my kids, so to speak, uh, but her mom was one of my teachers while I was at True Life Church helping with the youth ministry. Um, she has just started a new career promotion at Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Her name is Mrs. Deja Staples, and um, I'm going to let her get over now and then i'll tell you a little bit more about slick at the end but i want her to get started she has a lot of great information and i am so thrilled and we're going to be doing this every couple of months we're so excited to be partnering together so miss deja it is on you yes 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 well i just want to say i'm so excited to be here um i want to thank you for having me um according to the slick organization I do want to give a little information about myself. So I am 24 years old. After high school, I went to Bremen High School. After I graduated, I went to West Georgia Technical College. And I attended there for about close to two years. And while I was a student there, I became a federal work study student, meaning that you attend there and you also go to class. So you can, well, you go to class and then you also work on the side. So while I did that, I was able to get a lot of my work done at the same time making money. And I also got involved. I did a few student organizations. So I was in student government and I became president after a while over um, this program called the ACE Club. And just getting involved really helped me to stay connected, helped me, helped me stay up to date on everything as far as West Georgia Technical College and I guess my hard work and my efforts toward assisting students was recognized and my um, supervisor encouraged me to apply for a full-time job. So after I applied for the job, I was blessed enough to accept the offer. I started in the role of a student affairs assistant. So I did a lot of data entry for the college. So a couple of the things that I did was assist students with their application process, make sure they had everything they needed um, to get accepted into school. I assisted them a little with financial aid as well. Um, I did tours around campus, which I loved. I love interacting with people. I even um, got a chance to recruit in different counties. So I recruited at a Temple um, Festival one time as an, as an assistant, and it wasn't even really part of my job, but it was something that I was passionate about. My supervisor saw those efforts and she encouraged me to apply for the role of admissions, um, admissions counselor. So it, as an admissions counselor, you will also recruit. So in that role, I gained a lot more knowledge about different programs and everything. And it really encouraged me to go back to school to get my bachelor's degree and then go on and get my master's degree in higher education leadership because that's where I discovered that I had that passion. Now, when I did first start, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it's typical for people to not know, you know, what they want to do right off the bat when they graduate high school. Um, that's something that a lot of students think that is expected of them. And that's not the case. We understand you don't really know what you have a passion for while you're in high school. And especially those that are involved in sports or those that are involved in certain things, extracurricular activities, they don't really know what they have a true passion for. So I am going to discuss later in this video how you can kind of see based on your skills and things that you already naturally, your natural abilities, what could possibly be a good career for you. So I will discuss that later on in the presentation, but now I want to explain kind of what I do now. Um, like Ms. LT explained, I did recently walk into a new position. I'm now at a different college. <laughs> 
So I'm at what I'm at. Um, I was at West Georgia Technical College, and now I'm at Georgia uh, Northwestern Technical College. So it's closer to the um, northwest portion of Georgia, and we service a lot more counties. And instead of having five main campuses like West Georgia Tech, we have six main campuses. So we service um, a lot more students at this college. So just having more exposure to more students to assist and help, I'm really excited about. So in this role, my title is a special populations coordinator. That means that I assist students um, in special populations, those who are economically disadvantaged. This can mean you just receive a Pell Grant from low income, um, non-traditional programs. So if you are a female or um, a male in a program where your gender makes up at least your gender makes up 25% or less of the population of students that apply for that program. You can receive assistance then. I also assist um, students who are homeless, single parents. Um, I assist all kinds of students within special pops. And what I'll do is I'll allow, I will allow a lending um, library program for them to rent textbooks instead of paying. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the cost of textbooks, but they are very expensive. Um, I'll say that sometimes students can pay sometimes between $300 to $400 for a textbook. And what we do is we like to waive that fee and allow them to rent it through us. We also have a food, I mean, yeah, we have a clothing closet and a food pantry. So the clothing closet is, the means for it is to provide clothing to students, but especially professional attire. We want to make sure they understand um, how to professionally dress when you go to interviews. If they don't have or can afford those type of clothing, we do want to provide it for them. So they'll be able to come in and you know get something according to their size. And most of these clothes are donated from our instructors and our um, faculty and staff members. So they are professional attire that these students can gather and they can use toward their interviews just to make sure that they you know have correct um, clothing whenever they're going and they'll, they'll be given a fair chance as well. Now the food pantry, we do, I am working on um, ways to make it more convenient for students to access. So right now we currently have it on maybe three of our campuses, but we're in the process of making it available to all six of the campuses. So um, all students on each of those campuses will have access to it during class and we're trying to make it more um, convenient for those single parents to take food home on the weekends um, and during, throughout the week. So that's something I'm very excited for and I'm looking forward to you know, adjusting um, moving forward. Now, I do also want to say that um, I have grown to love higher education and over the years, it's become a passion to me because I've experienced it. So as a student, I know kind of how other students are feeling. I'm not, you know, someone that does not have a clue about, you know, the whole process. I'm familiar with the approaches. I'm familiar with what you need to do. And I would definitely say that I'm a person to contact if you have any additional questions out of this, you don't necessarily get answered throughout the presentation. So I do wanna move forward, but before I do, I wanna let you guys know, if you have any specific questions while I am presenting, um, text it in the chat box. And Ms. LT will let me know. And I want to answer it then and there because I'll be covering a couple of different things and I don't want us to get off topic and you kind of forget what you wanted to ask. So if you do have a question or anything that you're wanting to ask, go ahead and let me know. I don't mind cutting the presentation to answer you real quick and making sure you have a full understanding of everything. So I do want to kind of touch on trade programs. That's the meaning of this presentation, I want you guys to have a full understanding of what it is, because some people are like, well, what is that? I mean, is it just welding, air conditioning? No. So trade programs are very high in demand right now, and they are basically vocational programs or technical skills courses that are designed to provide hands-on training in areas um, in the community that are needed. So I'm going to share my screen and kind of give y'all an example of what the trade programs are. And I'm just gonna cover a couple of them, but I wanna get, this is gonna explain pretty much what the difference is. 
So she's saying there's more than just the welding and the mechanics. It's more to trade than just those two main things. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, all bear with me. I'm about to share. Okay. Okay, guys, can you guys see? Not come up yet. There you go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to Okay, guys. So I wanted you to kind of now this is probably pretty small, especially if you're viewing on a smaller screen. So I'm just going to kind of read over it and kind of explain what's listed. Now, I am going to go over financial aid more in depth toward the end of this presentation, but I kind of want to touch on um, what this HOPE career grant is. A lot of students, you know, think, you know, I'm not going to go to college because I don't really know, like, how much I'm going to have to pay, this, that, and the third. Well, let me tell you, if you go to college and you take advantage of certain grants, um, scholarships, and things fund that are used to fund your tuition and fees, you could possibly attend college, but not only attend for free, but have money left over to do whatever with. So I don't know if any of you can really tell, but there are a list of programs. There's business programs, healthcare programs, public service programs, and industrial programs. So several of these programs listed are trade programs, especially under the industrial programs. All of those are considered trade. Now, there's cosmetology, there's also institution, there's air conditioning, automotive, um, aviation. I even had a student who told me they want to learn how to fly planes, they want to get their pilot's license. Aviation is a center that Georgia Northwestern also offers. Um, construction, so you know now houses are being built. It's very, you know, high in demand. They're trying to get whoever they can who is certified to do the jobs. Construction management is also the diploma that we offer. Heavy diesel, regular diesel equipment, electrical, gas tusking, arc metal, uh, welding programs, mill operator, pipe shield welding, robotic technician. Um, it, the list just goes on and on. And there's so many things um, that these go into. So, so many career fields that these can go into. Now, I do want to give y'all an example because some people are like, well, where do I get started? Okay, so before I go into that, I want to share a success story from a student who I know personally who got involved in our diesel mechanic program and he was able to graduate. So he started right after high school. He graduated when he was 17, I want to say. And he started in the diesel mechanic program, but he thoroughly enjoyed the heavy diesel certificate that was embedded in it. So I also want to say most of these trade programs, if you do a diploma, you'll have multiple certificate areas that you'll be certified in within it. So you'll not only get the diploma, but you'll get certificates that you'll be certified in. And so under diesel mechanic, there's um, there's the engine service technician, there's the truck maintenance technician, heavy diesel technician. He was certified in all of that. The program was, I wanna say a year and a half, two years long. So after he completed it, he was, I wanna say 19 years old and he, ended up graduating and right before he graduated he was offered a job by Yancey. Does anybody know who Yancey is? They're similar to Yamaha and you know all of those um, heavy diesel you know tractors that you see probably on the side of the roads or at buildings when they're building houses they're lifting things up. So those are um, employers that we speak to often who are requesting students from our colleges to work for them. So this student accepted a job and he's making 60 to $70,000 right now. And he's 19 years old. So just two years after he was able to, just two years after y'all, after he completed our diesel diploma 
and he was granted all of those additional certificates, he was able to successfully get a job and he's making a lot of money. And he's enjoying what he's doing. He had a passion in it. He didn't even realize, you know, that's something that he would possibly be interested in. So, I mean, it's just so many success stories like that. So there's several of these trade programs and you want to, you may say, well, what is that? Well, what, what will I be doing? On our websites, if you take the time to go to them, it has a program um, description. So it can give you an example of what you'll be doing and possible careers that you'll be doing if you are successful in um, receiving that diploma or certificate. So, you know, there's information out there for everybody to view so you can have a better understanding. And I want to interject just a minute for mm -hmm. kids that are listening that knows me. Um, the young man, she said at 19 was making $60,000 to put into perspective. I'm not making $60,000 right now. And I've been working for the state government up here since 2010. So that I'm not <laughs> Perspective, give you some perspective. Go ahead. Yes. I'm not even making $60,000. If we were to divide $60,000 over 12 months, which is a year, that's what, $5,000 a month? That's a lot of money. And, that, and, and just him doing that, he's able to fully support himself and today's economy. So it's, 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 you know, it's things are higher. I know everybody's heard about gas prices going up. Everybody's heard about groceries going up. Everything is much more expensive. And since he's in a program, he's in a career field that is very high in demand, he'll always have a job. He does not have to worry about, you know, you know, getting a job in something that's not required or that's needed. So I also like to tell my students that if you don't know what you want to do, make sure you look into those career paths that are needed. So people are gonna constantly wanna hire you. Even if you leave a job, you're gonna be able to find another one because it's needed in the workforce. So that's something also to keep into perspective. Okay, so I'm going to move on. If I don't have any questions about these trade programs right here, I'll still continue to go over them. Does no anybody questions have any at, questions? Not at the moment. Anybody have a question? Quavion. Okay. Brief. Isaiah, Ethan, do either one of y'all have a question? No, no. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Um, I do want to kind of give you guys an example. Okay, so I don't know where everybody's located, but just in the state of Georgia, there's over 20 technical colleges that offer these trade programs. In Tennessee, there are several technical colleges that offer these trade programs. And what is awesome about these technical colleges is the trade programs that they offer are in need or are highly in demand in the counties that the schools are located. So that's another way that we make it probably more efficient for students to receive jobs and have better career outcomes because in their area, they should be hiring, some companies should be hiring for the certificates that you're graduating from. Um, I also want to say that there are a couple of benefits to trade school. So I'm gonna discuss a few that I wrote down. So here's the benefits from them. There's multiple start dates a year. So you can start, there's multiple, typically schools are introducing um, at least three semesters a year. So you'll have spring, fall, summer. Some are now introducing even more. They're doing mini semesters within the summer and the spring. So there's up to six or five or six semesters in a year. So there's several different times throughout the year you can begin these programs. So there's smaller students. Um, there's smaller groups of students. I don't know what high schools you guys went to, but I went to a very small high school. And there was maybe 18 people in my class. And there was under 100 people that graduated with me in my graduating class. So I was more comfortable with having that, you know, smaller student to teacher ratio and having a better relationship with my students. I mean, with my teacher, I knew everybody I graduated high school with. Um, I do encourage smaller environment, learning environments, because you're not just a number, but you're very valued. And I want to make sure that you're understanding what you are learning 
and you don't have to necessarily compete with the entire class of people. I know that in some universities, there are two to 300 people in a class. And I just wouldn't feel that confident, you know, asking questions per se in large groups like that. But these smaller groups are students that will also be like-minded peers. So you will have buddies in there that's also trying to get the same exact program, you know, complete the same exact program you're trying to complete. And then y'all can possibly even find jobs together. Um, I wanna say it typically saves you money. So you, students who receive these certificates um, and diplomas do not have to attend school for four years. So you're typically gonna be in college for less time. So you will be able to complete your program in less time and spend less money over the course of years. So most of these certificates can be completed in one to two semesters as well. So I do want to say that you could, <coughs> you could finish it quicker and then you could be granted a job much sooner. I wanna say that there are career services available on each campus. We've actually gotten a lot better with this. So students who are completing our programs are successful in finding jobs because we make sure that when they're close to graduating, we sit down with them. So what's your, what is the place that you want to work? We, uh, we have job websites through our colleges that you can apply for and those employers can look at your um, resume, look at your cover letters and they can make sure that you're qualified and they'll hire you right on. And that's another thing that technical colleges invest um, in their students, they invest career services and workshops to assist students with completing a resume, a cover letter, making sure they understand the proper steps to applying and, and being at, having access to jobs and um, getting successful, successful in receiving. And we really like to invest in our students to make sure they are going to be successful when they leave us. I wanna say that all of, I wanna say all, I'm just gonna say all, all of these trade programs are basically high in demand in their county. So if you are going into a trade program that's high in demand, and when I say high in demand, we're gonna think about, let's say something that's high in demand. So gas right now is high in demand. They can raise the gas prices to $8 a gallon. And guess what? Everybody's still gonna pay $8 a gallon. They may not want to, but they're still gonna pay it because they need it. So that's the same thing about trade programs. People are gonna pay our construction workers, our heavy diesel workers, our automotive technicians, you know, all of these people, they're gonna pay them because they need it. We have to have a car to get from point A to B, so there's always gonna be automotive around. There's also a cool program um, at Georgia Northwestern where they focus on auto collisions. So cars that get in wrecks, we focus on paint jobs. There's over a thousand paint colors. We work on faculty and staff cars, so our students are having that real contact with actual, you know, problems, and they can actually assist them accurately. And their instructors are right there, right by their side, so they're learn. It's just a great learning experience for them. Um, and they, those students, focus on ordering parts for cars. So everything that we offer within our trade programs are specifically preparing our students for the workforce and high demand um in high demand areas of study so keep that in mind um it's a lot of hands-on training so a lot of people learn with their hands and I'm one of those people that learn with their hands um I'm not one of those who can sit in a lecture and retain all of the information I have to actually do something related to that information or you know actually verbally say it at least but a lot of people have different learning styles. And that could also be something that you wanna look into your typical learning style so you can be more successful in retaining information. Um, so our hands-on training, for example, let's see, I'm gonna use automotive since I've already been on it. So like I was saying, our students, they work on faculty and staff cars. They work on cars who need adjustments or oil changes. These students are thoroughly um, equipped to do these jobs. I also want to say that there's also a program and I don't think it was, I don't think that it was administered last year because of COVID, but there's a program that our automotive students will intake in and they will get to drive up to Canada in a car that they've worked on and then drive back. So there was an older car, I want to say from the 1960s, um, like a little beetle looking car, you know, they all look like that. Um, from 1960, they drove it up there and it actually, 
had some issues while they were driving it and they were able to work on the car and get back down to the college. So that took, I want to say they did that over the course of maybe one or two weeks. And um, it was a very exciting um, activity for our students to get involved in and very realistic and hands-on. Also job placement. I've been talking about this throughout this presentation. Job placement rates are very good in trade programs. And most students will, you know, their parents say, go to college, go to college, you go to college, go to college. But do you know what you're going to college for? You don't want to go to college and have no idea and just be taking classes in areas that you are not familiar in. And then you may decide later on, oh, well, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to change my major. There's nothing wrong with changing your major, but you want to make sure that you have some type of idea before you go in as far as what you want to do. Because if you get a year into taking your program, you're taking all these classes and you want to change your major now, well, the major that you're changing your classes to may not accept all of your prior credits that you've taken. So not only have you wasted money, but you've also wasted time. The new program you're in, you may, it may take an additional year because those previous classes are not going to be accepted into the new program. So you want to make sure that you have a good idea on what you want to do. And then also the last one, complete your program faster. So what I'm going to um, give you guys information on, what I recommend is you look up, um, it's called careertest.com. And in the careertest.com, you can actually go through a list of questions. So are you a hands-on learner? Do you, and it, it don't say, are you a hands-on learner, but it will say, what would you like to do? And it'll have a list of you're a critical thinker, you're, you know, you like to get involved in projects, this, that, and, the, and answering those questions, it will pinpoint to you what, you what kind of learning style you have and what careers that you would be most successful in. That is what I highly recommend. I did this test right out of high school and it said that I was good with mathematics, which I was, I was very good with math. I had a mentor tell me that he wanted me to, um, get a degree in math because if you get a degree in math that doesn't mean you have to be a math teacher that doesn't have to that doesn't mean you have to go into accounting or finances there are so many fields that you can do just under the rim of mathematics I didn't listen and I ended up just you know doing like a basic or generic um, certificate and then I found a passion for something else but if I were to have went into that passion I would be making over sixty thousand dollars right now because of the type of career fields that are in mathematics. Just having that genuine, that um, general knowledge of certain levels of math can open up so many doors for you. So I think it's very important that you listen to your career counselors or those that are, you know, investing in you, making sure that you have a great understanding of, you know, your skills and what careers will be best for you because they are trying to set you up for success. Um, I do want to share now a few success stories. Um, these are not directly trade related, but they are technical college related. So my husband actually graduated from West Georgia Technical College. So I went to West Georgia Technical College under business management and then transferred out to get my bachelor's and then my master's, but he went for health information systems. So um, kind of the health world of IT. IT is always gonna be needed. Every company needs someone to be in the IT department to assist with technology. That's always going to be needed. So that's a great program as well. Um, he now works at University of West Georgia in the IT department and he's doing very well for himself. Um, I do want to say that he's always had a passion for IT, but in the beginning, he was more so just trying to, you know, pay the bills, just get a, a generic job. I think he worked at Walmart at first. But he really invested in the things that he was interested in, he had passion for, and now he's doing well. So don't think that, oh, I don't, I don't think that I could do that. Or I don't think that, oh, I don't think that I'll be able to make that job. You know, or I don't think that I couldn't do that. Yes, you can. You can seriously invest in yourself, and it starts now. While you're young, this is the perfect time for you to mess up and relearn. You know, you can actually invest in yourself get into something that you're interested in and stick with it and you will be very successful and you will not only be successful, but be doing something that you're love, that you're going to love and that you're passionate about. You want to make sure that you're passionate about whatever you're going to be doing so you don't dread going to work every day. You don't dread having to do it 
when you enjoy your job, you don't, it doesn't even feel like a job. And that's, that's the goal for it. This doesn't feel like a job to me. I'm very passionate about talking to y'all about these programs because they've helped me and they've helped my family. Another example is gonna be my mother, Miss Sarita. She actually started at West Georgia Technical College. She was in early childhood education, I believe. And years ago, she was a parapro um, professional at Jones Elementary School in Bremen. And um, she, assisted, she loved working with young kids. And then she discovered she had a passion for it. So then she later went to Mercer University, um, got her bachelor's degree, and now she has her master's degree. And it's, um, I know it's related to counseling or behavioral health. And she's loving what she does right now. She's a therapist and she loves assisting and talking to kids, helping them through their issues and making sure that she provides sound advice to them. Um, all of these examples of people who I'm telling you, me included, are people who started, you know, at a technical school. And I do recommend that you all give it a try. Look into it. Don't think, you know, oh, that's not for me. I very much believe that there's something everybody can do at a technical college. If you look into it, read the description, the program description of it, of the programs, get a visual understanding of what you could possibly be doing. It'll even list careers that you could be doing. And then look those careers up on Google. Don't be afraid to look things up on Google because there's so much information. Um, before I got into higher ed, where I am now, I looked up on Google how to become an admissions counselor, how to become this or that. It will, there's websites. I know there's one study.com. I like to look it up. It will tell you, you need to go, you need to receive a bachelor's degree. You need to get experience in this. You need to do this. That is so detailed and that can help so many people toward their goals. So not only do I encourage you to look up careertest.com, do the career test, see what you, based on your natural skills and abilities, what you will be most successful at. Then look up how to become blank. It can be whatever, how to become a vice president in over institutional things, how to become, you know, a manager over this or that, how to become this. It will tell you, type, it'll be a bunch of different things that come up, but look at study.com. Study it'll tell you directions on literally what to do as far as your career goes. And then whenever you, you know, are getting that bachelor's degree, it'll give you an example of what to get your bachelor's degree. So you will have an example of, okay, so you'll need to have a bachelor's degree in either this, that, or that. Choose one of those to go in a direction. So that will kind of help you streamline what you want to do. Because when I started, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I did eventually look up a lot of information on Google and it was very helpful to me. Okay, so now guys, before I move forward onto admissions and financial aid, I want to ask if anybody have any questions. Sure, no one has any questions before we move on. Go ahead, Ms. Stasia. All right. So a lot of people are unsure as far as um, the steps goes to apply to college. So when it comes to admissions, right now, I know a lot of people have heard probably you have to take a placement test. You have to take you know, SAT, um, SAT, all of these different things you have to take or tests or exams you have to take. Right now, that requirement is waived for traditional students who are wanting to apply to college. Due to COVID, it's been waived up until um, fall of 2022. So if you're not in high school and you're interested, um, definitely apply now so that you can go ahead and have that process waived and then you can begin your program. So number one, you'll have to have admissions would mean the application. So I'm gonna go to, let's see. So this is probably pretty small, but I'm gonna explain what's gonna be going on. Um, okay, so for number one, you do have to submit an application. Luckily, we're in a great month where tons of students are applying to college right now. It's typically like the apply to college month. So Georgia Northwestern Technical College is waiving the $25 um, application fee. 
the week of next week. So the 8th, November 8th through 12th, the application fee of $25 to apply to the school is going to be waived. You do not have to pay. You can apply for free. So starting Monday, you will have that option. Second, it says, yeah, we're currently waiving the placement exam. We don't know um, if it's going to be extended. The date it says fall 2022, but we don't know if it'll be extended um, further than that. I've heard that it could possibly ex be extended until 2023. So I still encourage you guys um, to still put an application in. It's not going to be requested at this time, but don't be alarmed if later it is. But that could be the AccuPlacer exam, which is just a generic exam of math, English, reading, um, math, English, reading, and I believe some type of sciences. And there's ACT, SAT, even PSAT scores. And then also third, you'll submit a copy of your high school or GED transcript. So when students who are graduated, we will need an official transcript. You can get that from your high school counselor that was previously at your high school, or you can order it from the Board of Education in the county that you attend the high school in. Okay, so fourth, this is not a requirement for you to get accepted, but this is a requirement before you can register for classes. So the fourth one is you'll have to register and attend online orientation. So there's a new student orientation that you'll have to attend. So a lot of students are like, you know, when I apply, do I just come to college? No. So new student orientation is going to be um, something where all new students begin and they will learn how to use their student portals. It's gonna be called Blackboard and BannerWeb. You will learn how to use, um, how to log on and see your detailed class schedule. You'll see, you'll learn how to register for classes, actually select them and put them on your schedule. You'll be able to access all kinds of information related to you as a student. So we show you how to do all of that information at New Student Orientation. We help you to understand what to expect whenever you do come as a student. When you get to class, when you're using your Blackboard, make sure you look up your syllabus. So it's all kinds of information. So for example, whenever you start your classes, your instructors will give you a syllabus. And I know that most students who are in middle and high school will receive a course syllabus when they go to class. And it just breaks down what you're gonna be going over, but it's a little bit more detailed when you come to college. It's gonna, some of them actually have every week's class schedule and every week's um, duties and responsibilities and assignments you'll have to do. So it's very detailed and that's a good way to, for you to prepare. Um, I do want to also add that there are several campuses and locations at Georgia Northwestern College. So this goes all the way up to the Tennessee line and it borders Alabama, Northeast Alabama as well. So at Georgia Northwestern, there are a total of six campuses and that's plus our career site at the Aviation Center, which is related to um, pilots flying, make, making sure you understand how to activate and, um, and utilize a plane. But there are, there's a Catoosa County campus, there's a Floyd County campus, a Gordon County campus, Polk County campus, Walker County campus, and a Whitfield Murray campus. So the closest one um, to me would be the Polk County campus. And there's a little map here. I wanna see if I can zoom. If I can't zoom, yeah, I don't think I can zoom in, but that's okay. Um, there's a little map here and it shows you all the different counties. So there's Dade County, Walker County, Catoosa County, Whitfield County, Murray Camp Campus County, um, Gordon County, Chattooga County, Floyd County, and Polk County. So all, out of all of those nine counties, we have six campuses at Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Um, I do want to say, it, even if you're not sure if you want to attend a technical college, still apply. There's so many opportunities to apply for free. Even at West Georgia Technical College, they're going to be waiving the application fee up until... I wanna say the end of this month. So if you are closer to West Georgia Technical College, which are in the counties of Carroll, there's a Carroll County campus, Douglas County, LaGrange, um, Coweta, which is in Noonan, and there's a, 
on Murphy, which is in Waco, Georgia, close to Bremen, Georgia. If you are closer to those, they are also waiving the application fee. Put an application in. You can put an application in for next fall, 2022, for free. Keep it there just in case you decide you want to go. You know, we'll be contacting you, letting you know what's needed from you so that we can get your, ap your application status complete and you can have everything um, ready to go whenever you do decide, you know, that you want to attend. I want to say that we have very low tuition rates. Um, there's $100 per credit hour. And I know some of you are not familiar with it. And I honestly want to say most of you probably will not even have to pay out of pocket to attend. But um, definitely know that our tuition rates are very, very low compared to other colleges. Um, there are deadlines that you have to meet. So priority deadlines for Georgia Northwestern Technical College, it is November 30th. And the deadline for West Georgia Tech, I believe, was November 4th, but they're still accepting applications. You want to get your financial aid in. And this deadline, the priority deadline is for the upcoming semester. So the next semester is going to be spring 2022. So just make sure that you understand that there are deadlines for you to get information in prior to the semester that you're wanting to attend. Keep that in mind. All of that will be plastered on the website of the school that you're wanting to attend. And if you're wanting to know more information about that, all you have to do is call the admissions line or financial aid line and they will get you that assistance. Do I have any um, questions about the admissions process before I'm going to financial aid? I think we have some very quiet youth and young adults. Someone has okay. a question. Um, I may have looked away. Did you talk about the uh, placement? Yes, it is going to be waived. Um, the placement requirement is related. So you don't have to submit test scores or anything um, to attend as a traditional student. But you did bring up a good, uh, like I wanted to do, I did want to touch on dual enrollment. So if you are in high school, you do have the option to participate in dual enrollment. And that basically means you'll be taking college level courses while you're in high school and they also count for high school and college. So because they count for that, before because they count for both, that's a benefit, but also it can be a little tricky because if you don't get a good grade in the course, it still counts as a college grade. So when you go to that school after you graduate, you're still gonna have that grade on your account. Um, so I do encourage you to make good grades, make sure you're taking advantage of all the resources available. There's tons of tutoring available for free at these technical schools. There's tons of support services. There's tons of meetings that you can have with career advisors and support advisors. Make sure that you're making good grades and giving you the assistance to um, succeed in those classes. So when it comes to dual enrollment, if you are interested, which I recommend because we have students, and I just learned about it yesterday, they're having a, at Georgia Northwestern, next week we are preparing for um, our dual enrollment students who are graduating with certificates and diplomas and even some with associate's degrees. While they're still in high school, we are preparing a ceremony for them and we're going to have where their parents can come and those supporting them can come and they will literally walk across the stage as if they're a graduating college student well, because they are um, while they're still in high school. So we're having a ceremony for those that are going to be graduating this December with certificates, diplomas and some with associate's degrees and um, they will be awarded you know, those credentials at this ceremony. And after they are awarded these credentials, guess what? They can go right to work. So after they get out of high school and even some of those, it's now some of these programs have an age requirement. So that's where it kind of gets tricky. Some has um, an age requirement of 16 and some has an age requirement of 18. For example, CDL, great program, commercial truck driving. Those guys are making, some are making $2,000 a week. Okay, so I mean, it's a great program to get involved in, but you do have to be 18 years old um, or older to participate in that. So um, some of these programs, you know, will not allow you to necessarily start the career. But guess what? When you graduate, you're already 
at the point where you can start work and receive funding for to support yourself. Um, I recommend dual enrollment. I almost got into dual enrollment. Um, I believe my sister and my brother did dual enrollment um, um, while they were in high school. And I know for my sister, she was able to, when she got to high school, skip over taking certain freshman classes she would have been required to take because she had those dual enrollment classes taken care of. Um, I recommend it. It's absolutely free to do dual enrollment. So once you are interested, you'll go to your high school counselor. Um, and usually there is a dual enrollment counselor, not just the high school, regular high school counselor, but now they have dual enrollment counselors. That will get you the dual enrollment application. You'll put on there what program you want to do. You'll put on there your personal, you'll put on their contact information, the program you're interested in. And then there is designated high school coordinators um, to assist these specific students interested in dual enrollment. So we take over, all you have to do is submit the application and we make sure you have the steps to get those classes. So some of these dual enrollment classes people will take are just core classes. So you're not technically having to do a, a technical certificate, but you can take math, English, speech. You can take all of these different classes while in high school and it counts for those math, English, you know, psychology, I mean, all of those basic classes you'll be taking anyways. And some students will tell us that the classes they take at the college are easier than the classes that they're taking at the high school. So I definitely recommend that students take it because it can count toward that and it's free. I mean, you don't want to be stuck with us. Yes. Deja, okay. The te I may be calling it the wrong thing. Um, I know about the SAT and the ACT. But like when you go to apply, do they have like a placement test to test what skill level you're on to see if you need the the um, regular class or maybe the remedial, like whatever they yes, call it? Yes, that's the AccuPlacer. That's what it's called right now. It's okay. called AccuPlacer, but that has been waived. So oh, that, that has been waived. Okay. Yeah, so that the AccuPlacer, you don't have to submit SAT, ACT, AccuPlacer. You don't have to do any of that. All you need um is going to be the application on file. You're going to need to submit documentation of lawful presence. So that's going to be like a birth certificate, driver's license, or something like that, proving Georgia residency. Or if you're in Tennessee or a different state, proving residency of that state. And then you're going to need your GED or high school transcript. Wow. Only things we're needing because the other requirements are not there. And once you're accepted, we'll give you information on attending new student orientation, where we will go over, you know, things about the college, how to, you know, interact with your instructor, logging onto Blackboard, BannerWeb, all of these different, um, court, not courses, but different websites you'll have to nav navigate through to do your coursework. So they'll explain all that at new student orientation, but you'll have access to that information. Um, but yeah, the placement test, AccuPlacer, all of that is waived right now due to COVID. So thank you, COVID, for that. <laughs> To have that because <laughs> I mean that test was hard they even made us when I was working at the Carroll campus they made us take the test and we were like okay this is kind of crazy I mean we were you know it was a little bit of us you know struggling passing certain areas so we can only imagine what our students are going through especially those coming back to school after 20 years of no instruction you know so um so I'm excited about that honestly so what if I do struggle in math and I'm, and I'm put in a regular class because they waived the test. Okay, so that's the one thing that I love Georgia Northwestern for. So Georgia Northwestern has um, a student success center specifically dedicated to student success. They offer um, student success um, counselors that will contact students if they are not doing well in their classes. And we have an early alert system. So if instructors are noticing students are falling behind in certain areas, those, um, they put an early alert out. We will then contact that student, offer them those free um, tutoring services for that specific program that we offer on our campuses. I took tutoring when I was at West Georgia Tech. I took accounting, um, 1100, it was the basic accounting class and it was hard. And I told you guys earlier on that I was really, really good at math, but accounting is a different type of math. You're not just learning math and math problems. You're learning different terminology. They call different problems this and that. I mean, it's just, it's just all kinds of a different way of speaking about the math. And so it was, it was difficult for me. I took the 
um, tutoring courses and I was able to pass with a B and I was excited because I didn't have a B before I went to those classes, okay? <laughs> before I went to the tutoring service. So I definitely recommend that you take advantage of that if it's free. They usually offer them on um, different campuses, different times. I know that when I was going, the tutoring was offered from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays or so. So, I mean, it's just, it's just a different way, but just when you learn, you know, what type of tutoring services are available at certain times, take advantage of it because you don't want to have to retake a class. If you know you're struggling in the class and, you know, it's just not going well for you, take advantage of those tutoring services. Even if that's still not enough, our early alerts um, will continue to notify our um, student support servers and they will reach out to the students and encourage them to drop the class because if you end up failing a class, it affects your GPA tremendously. We'll encourage them to drop the class to where they will just receive a W and they will not get a grade for it. So your GPA will not be affected. And then if you are wanting to retake the class, we make sure we work with you earlier on taking that course so that you are more aware and that you are, you know, better assisted throughout the entire course. So we are very student detailed. Now, West Georgia Tech does not offer an early alert system. So I have witnessed several students go through these programs and just fail out of them and not do good. So it's kind of up to the student to navigate through and to recognize and access those free tutoring services because they do offer tutoring services, but there's not as much hand holding toward that and making and student assistance. So I'm excited that Georgia Northwestern offers that um, early alert system and they have a student success center that is very detailed and hands-on with the students. Um, do you have any more questions? And I know it looks like I'm looking down the entire time that I'm talking, but it's because my camera's up there and I'm looking at y'all right here while I talk. But um, do you have any more questions? Does anybody have any additional questions on the admissions process? Before I go on the financial aid. I guess not. Okay. So now we're going to touch a little bit on financial aid. So when I was a student, I'll use me for example. One thing a lot of students don't know about is Hope Scholarship. So Hope Scholarship is right now here under scholarships. I'm jumping all around y'all, bear with me. Um, but when I was a student, I received a HOPE scholarship. You can receive HOPE scholarship if you graduate with a 3.0 or higher out of high school. That automatically qualifies you to receive additional assistance. So on top of me also receiving um, Pell Grant, federal Pell Grant, so it's from the uh, government. You do not have to pay any of this, and you don't have to pay any of this back. So it's from the government, you know, just assistance with financial assistance toward my classes. I also received an additional HOPE scholarship on top of that. And I was awarded so much funding that I received additional funding that I got to keep in my pocket after every semester. So it's called a refund check. And a lot of people call it my refund, my school refund check or whatever when you are attending school. So um, on top of that, other students also apply for additional scholarships. There are foundation scholarships. There's all kinds of scholarships outside of your school that you can also apply for. My church, um, when I attended Macedonia Baptist Church in Villarica years ago, when I was graduating, they gave me a $200, I want to say, scholarship when I graduated from high school. So they will give, and there's so many places that are, are willing to bless you with scholarships so towards your school and that you can just be, you know, overflowed with funding and be absolutely okay. Well, so, so I want to interject here. Slick does offer students when once they graduate high school and enrolls into a college or technical school, um, we will offer up to two hundred and fifty dollars to go toward um, your college uh, or training, if you will, uh, fees. But there are certain guidelines. That, that are available on our website. Awesome, that is great. So this is a great example. You know, being involved in different organizations that are, that are really trying to help and, and set you up for success will definitely bless you with scholarships as well. So this is awesome. I, am, I definitely recommend all of y'all take advantage of that. Um, so moving on to these grants, 
there are several different grants that do not have to be repaid. So a lot of people say, you know, if I go to school, I'm going to have all this debt. No, not necessarily. If you attend, there's some, tons of grants. So HOPE grant. This is something also given by the government. And when it says HOPE, a lot of people don't know, but anything that says HOPE, um, it is funded through the Georgia lottery. So this is money that Georgia only offers. Georgia is the only state that offers HOPE. So it's funded through the Georgia lottery. So, you know, everybody, you know, if you go across billboards and it says the lottery is now at, um, you know, some billion dollars or, you know, all these millions of dollars. Well, people are willing to pay, you know, go to the, the uh, convenience store, get a lottery ticket and pay it. But all that money, Georgia is allowing a portion of that to fund students to go to college. So, I mean, as long as the lottery around and people, you know, people, you know, they're going to play the lot. Some people are going to play the lottery. Some people do every day. I know personally. So um, you're going to be funded for school through this. And this helps, you know, us not have to, our state not have to struggle with trying to find additional funding to send kids to school. So that is how it is funded. So there's several different ways. Um, this free money is funded to where you think that, oh, this is coming out of you know, I'm eventually, I'm still paying for this through tax or this, or, you know, my taxes. No, people, there's so many ways that Georgia have gotten creative toward providing financial assistance for students to go to school. So there's HOPE grant, HOPE career grant. And on the other page that I was on first, I'm going to go back to it. All of these programs that I'm about to show are funded through the HOPE career grant. So it's additional funding. So you can receive the HOPE grant and you can receive the HOPE career grant because the career grant is extra funding that goes towards students who are in high demand courses. Now look at all of the high demand programs. So look at all of these programs under industrial programs. All of those are trade. All of those are trade programs. There's also business programs, there's health programs and public service programs. So all of these programs are funded just because they're high in demand in the state of Georgia. So I'm going to name a few of them. So we have the business programs. We have business healthcare, the technology diploma. We have computer support specialist diploma. There's your IT field, cybersecurity, health information management. That's what my husband got his in. We got healthcare billing and coding. Billing and coding is so, 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 so high in demand right now. And there's a high need for those coding certificates. There's logistics management. There's med okay, medical coding. I just, I just mentioned network specialists. C PC repair network specialist, website design. There's um, website developer. There's onto the healthcare programs. There's advanced emergency medical care. So EMTs, you know, the emergency, the ambulance, there are certificates here that are paid for because they're high in demand. Basic dental assistant. Um, there's diagnostic medical cyanography. So we also have at the Floyd County campus, um, like an ultrasound um, room, where students, if you walk into it, it's, you know, like when pregnant women go to the doctor, they get an ultrasound. Even if you're not pregnant, you can get an ultrasound of like your kidneys, if you have something going on or different areas um, on your body that they can use the ultrasound for just to see how you're doing. Now, I will mention um, this room is so cool. They have everything set up like a real hospital. That's why I love trade colleges. Everything that you'll be learning to, everything, I mean, everything that you'll be learning is going to be so hands-on to the point that it can operate if, if we had to shut the school down, if there was an emergency, we could go into these rooms and they could operate as full hospitals or full medical centers. There, if you walk into the medical assisting portion of the, because um, we have a medical assisting diploma that's very high in demand right now. If you walk into the, um, the lab that they work in, there's an office, there's literally like, you know, when you walk into, the doctor's office, there's a desk that you'll check in. There'll be a clerk there sitting there looking through your files. They'll pull your name. Similar to if you go to the dentist, they'll pull your name, they'll pull your chart, your folder. They have all of that set up like an, enti like an entire operating medical facility. So these students are learning hands-on how to do these things and it's so cool. So moving on, there's healthcare assistant, um, medical assistant, paramedic diploma, there's phlebotomy technicians, so those that are that work with blood, 
There's a um, there's a certificate that you can get in very short amount of time. Some can get it in one to two semesters and you can already be in the hospital getting health experience to put on your resume. You can be drawn blood. Um, there's surgical technology. So there's so many different things. And in these surgical, like for, the, for example, surgical technology diploma, there's scrub rooms. I don't know if anybody's familiar with um, medical, not medical, but uh, Grey's Anatomy. So I, I love Grey's Anatomy. I'm watching it for the first time. A lot of people watch it over and over and over again. I just don't understand how they find that much time in the day because there's like 20 seasons. But um, <laughs> there's a scrub room that they're constantly scrubbing before they go into surgical procedures. There's a scrub room at these facilities. So everything is so hands-on and so like the real thing that our students are very over-prepared even when they go into the workforce, not even having that direct experience. Um, so public services, there's child development, early childhood education. So like I was mentioning, my mom, she received um, a degree in early childhood education before she started her degree going more toward um, behavioral health. She worked with children. So there's infant and toddler specialists. Then moving on to the industrial areas, there's air conditioning, auto electronical um, areas. There are automotive collision. So, you know, they'll work on cars that have been accidents. There's paint jobs they can do. There's aviation maintenance. So there's a guy that I actually work with right now. He went through our aviation program and he actually served in the military. Um, he went off to several wars and all kinds of things. And he said, our program is so like the real thing. He was able to, you know, learn so much and it's so realistic. It actually reminded him of being back in the war. And so he struggled with that for a minute like the real thing that you know you're learning all these things but it's it's so realistic to so that when you go into the field you're very prepared cnc specialists commercial um wiring wiring is huge right now because guess what it's used to houses there's houses being thrown up at this point so there's wiring needed everywhere um there's basic shield melding art there's commercial truck driving there's diesel insurance, diesel mechanics. So th this list just goes on and on. There's even a robotic technician program. And that is very high in demand because we're moving more toward technology. You know, they're building all these, you know, robots in different factories and mill plants to do the job and not necessarily um, have to have an actual person to do it. So that, that um, and the re reason why they do those things is because it lowers chances of human error and I know technology can still mess up, but there's less likely chance that things will be, you know, messed up and you will now have a more uniformed approach to doing things. So that's going to be very big moving forward. So all of these programs um, offered are awesome. I mean, they're so close to the real thing. And that's what people miss when they think about technical school. They just think about, you know, it's just a two-year school. I want to go get a bachelor's degree or this or that. There's nothing wrong with getting a bachelor's degree. I eventually got a bachelor's degree. But when you go, if you're just going to jump into something and you're not fully sure about what you want to do, I recommend you start somewhere at a technical school because you can still take those core classes that will fully transfer over. Now, core classes, another thing that we offer are associate's degrees and just core classes where you can fully transfer that to a bachelor's degree. And why a lot of people do that is because they save a lot of money. It's a lot cheaper to attend a technical school than to attend um, a four-year institution. So that's why people will start. And that's why I'm glad I started where I did and how I did because I saved money before going to my bachelor's degree. Um, I will say that when it comes to financial aid, after you complete, so back to financial aid for a second. Um, October 1st of every year, financial aid opens up for students to complete their FAFSA for the following fall. So October 1st of this year, October 1st, 2021, opened up the FAFSA for students who are wanting to complete it to attend fall of 2022. So it's now November. So guess what? FAFSA.edu, no. FAFSA.gov, I'm sorry, FAFSA.gov, F-A-F-S-A. F is in Frank, A is in Apple, F is in Frank, S is in Sam, A is in Apple.gov. If you go there, you can complete your FAFSA. 
for fall of 2022, if you like. You can go ahead and make sure you have everything needed. And a lot of people who apply for the FAFSA don't realize that the government requires all schools to do a random verification selection process. So random students will be selected for verification at random. So you may do everything right. You may complete your FAFSA. You may submit all the forms needed and you think that you're good. Well, if you don't check with financial aid, not knowing you could have been selected for verification, meaning that they need to double check, you know, this form of the IRS. They need to double check your Georgia Form 500 of, you know, and even if you're a dependent, you wouldn't have that information. Your parent would have that information. Another thing about FAFSA is that we always use two years prior, the tax returns from two years prior. So fall of 2022, we'll be using the 2020 taxes. So back in 2020, if you were, if you graduated from high school in 2020, you were probably in 10th grade. You're not filing your own taxes. So you would need your parents' 2020 tax returns. They will get that directly from the IRS or they can receive that from whoever filed their taxes. They will have access to that. I encourage you all to complete this process with your parents. You can go directly to the technical school you're wanting to attend. Go to the financial aid department with those taxes it has to be two years prior. So if you're wanting to attend for the 2021 uh, year, so you will need your 2019 taxes because you're attending for 2021. So you'll need 2019 taxes if you're wanting to attend this upcoming spring semester. That's considered, um, I know it'll be in 2022, but it's a part of the 2021 slash 2022 fafsa Since it started in 2021, a fall, you're gonna need those 2019 taxes. Next year, the 2022 fall is gonna be 2022 slash 2023, you'll need your 2020 taxes. I hope y'all are understanding this. I know that it's a lot. But if y'all have any questions, don't hesitate to chime in and, and ask for um, better clarification on something. Um, so I do want to encourage y'all, if you're interested in next year, this upcoming spring semester, to attend at Georgia Northwestern, for example, the priority deadline, they encourage you to get your FAFSA done before November 30th. You'll need your 2019 taxes because this is part of the 2021 slash 2022 FAFSA. So get your 2019 pack taxes of your parents if you were a dependent in 2019, or if you, you know, claimed yourself in 2019, get those taxes and go to a financial aid center at the college and they will assist you with completing your FAFSA. I always encourage students after you complete it, about a month later to two weeks later, definitely call the financial aid department and have them, um, and have them assist you with that and make sure that you've completed it properly for one, and you have not been selected for verification. So that's kind of where I wanted to touch on financial aid. Um, I've touched all of the little pinpoints I wanted to discuss, especially with trade, trade programs, um, different campuses. Um, near us, we're more toward the, the Western and West Georgia and Northwest Georgia area. So I've touched on those technical colleges and different counties that they're located in. Um, I gave you guys examples about how I developed, how I, you know, found a passion for what I wanted to pursue in my career. And now my goal, I'll go ahead and share a little bit more with y'all. My goal is one day to be a vice president over either institutional effectiveness um, at a technical school or over student success, um, because I do have a passion for it. And so in my goals to do so, I've you know, created certain things that I can do, certain areas I can learn. And that's really helped me pinpoint you know, how I need to go about things. And I just have a good idea. I think everybody should have a goal. If you, you know, you know how at the beginning of the year, people will do vision board parties, I encourage it. Think about something that you think you would like doing. If you say, hmm, I think I want to do this one day, or I think I want to do that look up how do you become this or that and then it will tell you the exact steps especially if you go to study.com it'll tell you the exact steps what you'll need to do the education required the experience required to become that or to be in that field of work i also encouraged that you do the career test.com 
see what you would possibly be best at based on your natural skills and abilities, how you learn, you know, how you interact with people, you know, areas, settings. It'll kind of tell you what you will be best at based on your natural abilities. Careertest.com. So I've touched on several different topics and areas. So we talked about um, that. We talked about what trade programs are. We talked about the benefits of trade. We talked about the admissions process, financial aid, and why people should choose trade school. We talked about um, examples. I attended technical college. My mom attended technical college. My husband attended technical college. My dad even attended technical college. Like there's so many people, you know, related to me that has been touched by technical college and, we, and they were really set technical schools have really set them up for success and they're very successful. So those are, you know, kind of the thoughts I wanted to touch on. And does anybody have any questions when I'm moving on to that portion? Any specific questions on anything that I have discussed? I got a question. Yes. Technical college all have master's program? No, so that's a great question. Thank you so much, Mr. O. Um, so technical schools only offers certificates, diplomas, and associate degrees. If you are interested in furthering your education to eventually get a bachelor's degree and then to move on to a master's, so it goes from associate's degree, which is a two-year degree, a bachelor's is a four-year degree typically, and then a master's is a two-year degree after you get your bachelor's. And some people will get on, go on to get their doctoral degree, which will be you know, some people have to attend from an, for an additional three to four years to get their doctoral degree. So that's the kind of way that the, the, the latter is, is associates, bachelors, masters, and then doctoral degrees. Now, if you're at a technical school, we only offer up to associates degrees. So I talked on, if you're interested in transferring, get into a program that we offer, that offers um, more core classes that will fully transfer off. So we, we call them transferable programs. I was in a transferable program. My business management degree transferred into, I went to DeVry University to get my bachelor's and it transferred into a technical management degree. So make sure you check with, you know, our programs of study and make sure that it's gonna fully transfer to whatever school or, you know, whatever you're eventually wanting to do, but you have to be in an associate's degree program. You can't be in a certificate or a diploma and then try to transfer to a bachelor's, I mean, a bachelor's degree it, to a four-year school, it won't work because four-year institutions are governed by um, the university system of Georgia course outline. And we offer those uh, college level math, English, psychology, speech, all of those main core classes that all students have to teach, I mean, to take at those four-year institutions, we offer it at cheaper rates. So that's why people will come to us, get their associate's degree like I did, my mom did, my husband did. He's about to go get his bachelor's degree. He got health information technology associate with West Georgia Tech and he and that's going to fully transfer over as well. So just check and see what program you're interested in. It'll be an associate's degree program at a technical college and then it will transfer over into a bachelor's if it is a transferable program. A couple of comments. I have a couple of kids online, the youth online, um, that may be interested in holder culture. Could you kind of explain on that, expand on that as far as what they can use that for? And another one, possibly uh, culinary as well. Okay. And you said, what was the first one? Okay. Holder, holder, holder I can't even pronounce the word, holder culture plants. Okay. Gotcha. So that will fall more into like agricultural um, related programs. Now we do not, okay, well actually we do um, at Georgia Northwestern Technical College. We actually have, um, let me see if I can find the ad. While I'm looking for the ad, I'm going to share with y'all more about our culinary program. So we have a culinary program and our students are getting trained up like hands-on experience. We have an entire kitchen, you know, like it's set up like as if it's a actual restaurant. So it's not like a regular kitchen. It's an actual, you know, if you go in the back of a, um, a nice restaurant, 
you'll see that they have all of these stainless steel, you know, rolling carts, double stoves. We have a nice um, center for students to engage in the culinary arts program. They learn the basics. So if you think that you're like really good at like cooking, you'll go to this and you'll learn the basics, one-on-one -on -one skills as far as measuring um, certain uh, oil to water to liquid ratios and how they can impact different meals and different baking techniques based on, you know, all kinds of stuff. So when you get into these programs, you're not just going to learn how to make things, but you're also going to learn the science behind it. So that's why our students do so well um, in our culinary programs, because you're learning the science behind how to make meals and things better and from scratch, especially. And when doing that, things that you probably already cook at home or things you probably, you know, cook for other people, you can learn how to adjust that and get it down to a science to make it more uniform every time, you know, they get you very accustomed to doing those measuring techniques, understanding how just, you know, oils to fats, you know, all kinds of different ratios to, to best implement best uh, cooking practices. So let me see. Yes, we have a whole culture program at Georgia Northwestern and it is awesome. Okay, so y'all, it's crazy because we had a sale and this is not the sale, it was last week. This, well, this week, this past week, they, um, they had a shed where you could go and you could get certain plants at a discounted price for faculty and staff. And it was so cool. I never got a chance to walk over. Um, it was very rainy and gloomy the days that I was at work. So I didn't, I didn't, I never went over, but I'm going to share this screen so that y'all can see. Let's, next time, let me know because I want a couple of different plants. I will definitely share. Let's see. Can y'all see the screen that I'm at? Come on. Mm, no, it's showing the um, how do I apply? Okay. There you go. You see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so GNTC's horticulture program, um, they offer so many different things here, you guys. So they were offering these plants. So if you read a little bit of this, um, there's different sales that we had um, from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on each day, and they cost $4 each, a variety of different colors, and these are so beautiful. The I like your phone. And they just learn the science behind growing certain things and maintaining certain plants, which is so, so, so cool. And especially now that we're moving into an age where um, everything, we have so much new construction, we have so much new um, houses being built. There's so many different, um, there's so many different organizations being built. And one thing that people overlook is they have to have nice landscaping. They have to have nice landscaping or it, the business will not look as good as it could. So if you think about Chick-fil-A, you probably thought, oh, Chick-fil-A is just always so nice. Chick-fil-A is so good. If you, if you go to Chick-fil-A, if you pay attention to their landscaping, how they keep up their plants, how they keep up everything, they keep everything, like they value their landscape and the, um, the way things look around their restaurant. Businesses also follow that example. Um, and this can also be very beneficial for um, business-wise if you have um, knowledge of that or if you're skilled in that area. There's so many um, companies that pay organizations and that pay businesses who are skilled in this to make sure that they keep up their landscape. And so it's a great program. So I did want to show you guys, um, let's see. If you had any specific questions on this, come to our website, view it and shoot me an email. I'm gonna show you guys my contact information. While she's doing that, any questions from any of the youth that's online, any of the adults that's online?
I know someone um, who has a hydroponics system set up in their home where they're mm -hmm. growing plants with certain UV lights and everything. And this person was talking to me about how to make plants and how to um, populate them. I mean, uh, like pollinate them and stuff, I guess because we have to have bees and stuff to pollinate them, but there are different ways to like splice plants and create different kind of plants. And I'm pretty sure if you get into the horticultural program that they'll tell you about that as well. Um, I was talking to Deja earlier about like forestry and um, people who want to be like park rangers and um, different programs like that. She was telling me about like linemen just gonna like run the lines to go to different um, things that they're building like homes and uh, different um, buildings and stuff. Um, those are the kind of careers that we don't necessarily hear about. Like I didn't hear anything about any of that when I was growing up, um, but one of my, teacher friends her dad was a lineman they make a lot of money and that's not one of the typical jobs that we hear about we hear about teachers and lawyers and doctors and stuff like that but a park ranger like you can yeah. live near the property and maintain it and open the gates close the gates or whatever but you know a lot about animals and about uh, different plants and stuff that's um in the forest and that kind of thing. So I think, oh, that is interesting. I never even, that was not even on my spectrum of knowledge as a child to even want to aspire to be. But yeah. that is really great if they do have a good um, agriculture program. Yeah, so it is a great program. I want to actually show you guys. So I pulled it up on our website and it's an associate's degree program. So it could potentially be transferable to a four-year institution if you needed it. But these programs are so specific. And when it comes to specific programs people are just wanting someone who's knowledgeable of it you know having like just that associate's degree what it means so much towards you selecting or, or applying and getting a position so let me show you guys i'm going to show you guys the website i pulled up okay so do you guys see the website that i'm on yes ma'am okay so this is our associate's degree um, in horticulture. Now, it, it is offered at the Floyd County campus. So another thing about our school is any program you're interested in, it'll show you the campus that it's going to be listed on, and it shows you the advisor for it, the program advisor. So if you have any specific detailed questions about, okay, so when I take these classes, what will be some of the things I'll be focusing on? Like what activities or anything like that about will I be doing? This guy right here, David Warren, who is under the advisor, he'll be able to assist you with that. Um, so it shows you y'all detailed classes. So I express, you know, general education courses. These are, you know, just the mathematics, college algebra, um, skills and reasoning. So those are those basic core. And then it goes into these detailed program classes. So you're going to be learning all kinds of things. And one thing about our school is it's very hands-on. So you're going to be in that actual greenhouse, learning all of these different techniques and skills regarding horticulture. Um, so it goes all down into all of these classes, y'all. You will be skilled and certified in each of these areas. And then this is what I was talking about, lane, landscape construction. So one good thing about the horticulture program is you have specializations. So what Ms. Sarita was talking about was the guy who's like the park ranger. He will fall more under the landscape specialization management. So he's managing that area, ensuring that everything on the land looks good and, and so forth. Um, landscape design, like you are getting so, you know, you're becoming so skilled in each of these areas. And each of these classes are still in the realm of being hands-on. So you'll be learning so much. So there's turf grass management, irrigation and water management, horticulture elected. So it just goes into detail. There's so many things. Are you guys able to see this? Yep. Okay, and then you have floral management specialization. You're learning floral designs. Y'all, another, another field of study that you could not field of study, but another job that you could kind of go into after having this associate's degree in this floral management specialization, you know, people who, um, who make flower arrangements, floral arrangements for funerals, weddings, all of that, those people get paid tons of money people pay big bucks 
for beautiful flower arrangements and those flowers, you know, some weddings have flowers that you don't even think they're real. You're like, that cannot be real. That looks too nice. They are real. And there are people who, who know this stuff down to a science who can tell you how, you know, certain things grow, how to ensure that certain plants are growing correctly so that they can remain beautiful. But these are just different areas of study that you guys can, you know, get uh, skilled on and to make sure that you're understanding, you know, before you go out to the workforce. But there are so many different programs. And this program, I would say, is in Florida. So that's right before you get into Rome, Georgia. It's not that far away. Um, I would say, you know, depending on where you are located. Now, I do want to go over culinary arts. So here's a brief culinary arts overview. Um, there's different degrees, programs, diplomas, and certificates. Now, I will say that if you take an associate's degree or diploma, these certificates are um, embedded in it. So whenever you get a degree or a diploma in culinary, you're going to get all of these certificates. So you're going to get food, you're going to get the prep cook, the food production worker, and you're going to get the catering specialist certificate. So you're learning about all of these necessary skills and the instructors are chefs. So we don't only have, you know, skilled trainers, but they're they are actually working in the field or have experience in these fields. So there's also a video. There's all kinds of stuff, you guys. Like I really... If you're interested in any of the things that I've mentioned, go to these websites, look up. They're very detailed in the information that they're offering, and they provide you so much knowledge on what you will be studying and what you will be overviewing while you're in this program. And then I also want to show you guys, so I mentioned the careertest.com. This is exactly what I'm saying. So select one that best fits you. So people, are you more interested in people, data, efforts, goals, ideas? Like these are the general questions that anybody can answer, not necessarily knowing what way it's going to go to. So I'll say people. Select one that best fits you. Focusing on feelings, attention to detail, building, assembly, building or assembling, providing my, pro proving my ability. I clicked through a couple of these so they may not be on point for me before I started this, uh, this term, but I'm just going to say teaching or coaching. Um, and you guys can see this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to say inspiring people. So improving people's lives, improving technology, improving procedures, improving performance, improving attitudes. Hmm. I'm going to say people's lives. Providing care, providing answers, providing commitment, providing leadership, providing motivation. I would say I'm motivation. Providing people, supporting people in pain, developing techniques to solutions. I would say definitely techniques to solution. Being supportive, being precise, being aggressive, being energetic. I'm pretty energetic. Yep, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, being sensitive, being right, easygoing, optimistic, friendly. I think I'm, I can be sensitive sometimes, but I don't. I don't like it. Like that. You can be okay. sensitive. All right, I heard that one. Okay. I don't say optimistic. Um, avoiding conflict. You know, leading by evaluation, leading by coaching, energizing. So y'all, this is gonna be pretty long, so I won't go over this with each of y'all. But you see the detailed questions there personal questions based on your natural abilities, your natural take on things. You know, you don't have to know anything to do this test. So you'll just complete this careertest.com quiz and it's gonna give you a list of, you know, courses that, not courses, but career fields that will best see, suit you based on what you're answering. And so this is a good place to start if you have no idea of what you wanna do. I highly recommend that everybody take this um, and even if you, you know, take it and it gives you a field of different things and you have questions about those things, reach out to me, reach out to me. Let me go back to my, reach out to me. So my information is right here. Let me know. 
Um, if you have any specific questions on any of this information, um, I have so many things, you know, I can assist students with. I'm very knowledgeable through experience. So if you have anything that you're confused on, anything that, you know, I can touch on to help you gain better clarification, let me know. So I have a question. Um, can you explain, because um, you are the special populations coordinator, what does that mean, special populations? Okay, so I went over this pretty early on in the presentation, but I will retouch because I know some people, <laughs> I, I will retouch. I know some people, <laughs> okay, I will, like, that's okay. I'll excuse your tardiness. Uh, <laughs> but the special populations coordinator, let me actually go to our website because I was very excited. I told my mom um, when, I, when I came to Georgia Northwest here, and even though I just had my first week on the job, um, they threw me into it. It was a lady prior on the job who did it and retired out of it. And they just wanted to, you know, update some things, have a fresh take on, you know, certain portions of the website and, and better explaining um, and better explaining what special populations is. So let me go to our website and I will review that information with you guys. I actually submitted, me and my supervisor, I submitted a proposal to her with things that needed to be changed and she loved the idea. So we made the changes on the website. Let's see. While she pulling that up, I want to thank Brother Omo, Mike and Sarita, A.E. Trilette, Poivion, who's down there as the Zoom user. Thank you all for being a part of this call today. And thank you all too. I appreciate all of y'all coming on. Um, if there's anything, like I said, I can help you with, I'll be more than happy. It's never a bother to me to assist. And I appreciate this opportunity, Miss LT. No problem. So I am, you guys can see the special population screen, correct? Yes. Okay, so special population. Okay, so the Special Populations Program at Georgia Northwestern Technical College is designed to offer comprehensive support services to students who experience barriers that could hinder them from succeeding in their educational goals. Um, our Special Populations pro Program offers additional assistance and support services to students in achieving their educational goals. And we strive to enrich the educational experience, promote success, and contribute to economic self-sufficiency um, of special population students. So, you know, when you complete a program, you want to be able to self-sustain within the career field, you know, just be familiar with how to, within the economy, be a citizen and, and go off and succeed. So we don't just talk about education and you complete your program, but we talk about um, resume, you know, cover letter writing. I will do seminars on, um, and I'll be sure to let Miss LT know this, but I'll be doing seminars and programs for um, interview training. When you go on the interview, certain things that are professional, certain things that are not. You know, I want to show certain things that are, you know, professional attire to wear on the job, what business casual is, what casual is, what professional is, like so many different lines and terminology that's used in the workplace, but a lot of people don't necessarily know what that is. So I'll discuss all of that in, in certain meetings and um, seminars that I'll be doing at the school. So who are identified as special population students? So for one, it says single parents. So students who are primary or joint, have primary joint, joint custody for a dependent child or person who is single and pregnant. Um, out of work individuals, students who are out of the workforce or unemployed due to layoffs, relocation of a company or downsizing. Um, English learners. So a lot of people didn't know this, students who have English as a second language. We offer free English as a second language courses um, for students to take um, at Georgia Northwestern. They also do this at West Georgia Technical College. And those students who um, complete, so they have to go through an exam or they'll have to do some type of assessment to prove um, certain adaptation or certain abilities toward understanding and performing with English, the English language before they can apply and become a student. So once they have succeeded in that, I will then provide them additional assistance as far as special pops. Um, homeless individuals, students lacking stable 
and appropriate housing. So foster care students as well, youth who are in or have aged out of the foster care system. Um, economically disadvantaged, this includes low income youth and adults and or pale grant eligible students. Um, let's see, non-traditional program students. So non-traditional fields who were given gender with less than 25% of the fields work. So an example of this is going to be um, a man in the cosmetology or dental assisting or early childhood education program or even nursing. Um, also, so women, women who are in automotive, computer technician, um, construction man management or welders. So just because you're in a field that is mostly the opposite gender, you can receive additional special populations um, assistance. And also um, individuals with disabilities. So these are students who need classroom accommodations. So this could be on the lines of so many different things. Um, if you have certain vision problems, even if you wear glasses, you could consider yourself an individual with a disability. So it can go in the line of you needing classroom assistance or if you can't see certain areas of the board, you know, because of your vision or if you need, um, if you have test taking anxiety, that qualifies as you having a disability because you need um, classroom accommodations. Um, so you need to take your, your test in a different location or if you have issues with focusing, ADHD, like is, there's so many different things that qualify students to have for having disabilities because they need certain classroom accommodations and I can provide them these additional services. And if, there, if you did want additional information, accessibility services is right here highlighted and it goes to tell you how to get those, who to contact and get those accessibility services. Now, what can I assist students with now that I'm a special populations coordinator? We have the campus food pantry. So I discussed that. Um, we have a clothing closet. I'm really trying to make this more professional attire for students who um, are trying to get a job or they have an interview or if they have a professional event to attend, we have a closet full of professional attire that they can have. They can come in, get, take with them, wear. You know, I just want, you know, to try to set them up for success in their area. We're gonna have a lending library program. So any of those students that I, if you fall under any of those criteria, you can qualify for the lending library program and you can receive, a, you can rent out a textbook from me and I will, um, and you won't have to pay for it from the bookstore. So you don't have to pay two, $300 for a textbook. You'll be able to rent it out for me. I will purchase it on your behalf, as long as it's not an access code um, textbook. So I am, you know, working on certain projects to see if I can adjust that requirement. Um, if it's books with access codes, um, you do have to still purchase that. However, we, are, we do still make accommodations and, um, I can definitely assist with that if it's a problem or if you don't have the funding for that, I can still assist with that area, but that's not something we typically do. Um, but we do have a library and lending program so you can learn out textbooks. Um, we have a skills workshop. I wanna focus on certain skills. Um, so many students struggle in just not knowing um, what's appropriate, you know, in the workplace, certain um, parenting skills. So we'll have, um, I know that there are classes that KSU, so Kennesaw State, Kennesaw State, Kennesaw State University, <laughs> they do courses with us. Um, they provide officials from their school to come on to our campuses or come to certain locations and our students have the option to attend and they will give parenting advice from their, um, from certain, certain uh, people, so certain students that they have who are majoring in certain areas they will then, for credit purposes, provide workshops for us, um, for our single parents to attend, to deal with certain you know, areas in that um, field. So you know some single parents struggle with um, disciplinary actions, how to speak properly to their kids, you know, certain techniques they can try to assist them. Like there's so many things that we provide workshops on to best assist our students. And um, we're also, going to have peer meetings. So that's something I'm also working on. I want us to all come together. I want to do some sort of point system for our students to come on and to get involved in. If they attend a certain amount of meetings, they get resort, they get rewarded for that. 
and not just you know attending for information, but you're actually learning, growing from this information that you're receiving. Um, and then resource referrals. If there's something that I can't do, but I can assist you with or provide additional information through a different department, I will refer you there so that you can um, grow from their, from their services. So that's pretty much what I do. Um, there is more information to be uploaded to the information to the website about special populations, but it is definitely in the works. Um, the more information I have and the more things I do uh, within the program that could assist students who are not even necessarily students, I will let you know. But this is a lot of this information is for those special prop students specifically. Do I have any additional questions um, that I can answer for you guys? Going once, going twice. I guess not. All right. Well, that is all that I have for you all today. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity. And like I said, if there are any uh, additional questions or if anybody has anything else they'd like me to touch on, don't be afraid to reach out to me, even if you think of something later. Don't be afraid to reach out. My contact information is right there. Um, I do have an office phone, but I have not gotten it yet. So my phone number is not available just yet. Um, but whenever I do get that phone number, if I'm not in my office, definitely leave a voicemail. I am typically in the food pantry or the clothing closet organizing that. So I'm not all the time in my office, but if you leave a voicemail, I will definitely return it. Um, I'm very excited to be here with you guys. I was very excited to share this information. I have had such a great time. And if there's anything else you'd like me to touch on, don't hesitate to reach out. We want to thank Ms. Deja for being our presenter for our first class in this new program. Uh, we, are, we will be seeing more of her and hopefully in person doing some things together with Slick. Um, thanks everyone for joining in and participating. Um, soon as we are off the line, I will uh, upload the video on to YouTube and that should be within the next hour. So you all will receive a link and it will also be posted on our website, www.slycinternational.com and Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm trying to get used to all that, but anyway. Um, Deja, you should get your shirt within the next two weeks. Awesome, thank you. So, who said, Sarita, you said something? No. And um, if you all would like to continue to share about Slick, please do so. We're always looking for donations and doing more for our kids. The next speaker will be for our youth financial literacy class in December. And then next in the month of January, we will have a uh, administrator from Tallahassee Community College from Florida. And toward the end, uh, and Miss, I'm going to go ahead and say Dr. Sarita Smith <laughs> uh, will be presenting as well in the month of February. We have a world renowned genealogist uh, that's going to be actually presenting, and another person from um, hopefully. Uh, fam you um so we're going to be on this gig man we in college and and in and, and technical trade school preparation that's what we're going to do focus on for the month of for not month for 2022 to get our kids prepared um so if anybody would like to donate dollar sign speak s-p-e-a-k capital s capital l capital y capital c um, speak for Slick um, on Cash App. We also on PayPal and you can send a check. So let's just let us know. Um, we are all about speaking life to youth and children. And for those who are local, I will see you all about 5.30 for the award banquet celebration, Elizabeth Wilson.
Foundation where I would be receiving an award for community excellence. And I am still tired from last night from the basketball game. So I'm about to take a nap shortly. But Deja, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This information was so much needed. Um, I love you and thank you for giving us the time. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for having me. Um, I'm so excited to be here with y'all and I hope to continue to do this more in the future with you. Um, I love you all and thank you so much for coming on and listening to what I had to say. Okay. Does anybody have anything to add before we end this session? Question. You said, are we going to be at the ranch, LT, tonight? Uh, it's going to be at the, do I need to send you the address? Yes, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll send you the information. You know, I'm, I'm on the struggle bus all the time. Okay. But if nothing else, thank you all. And we will see each other next time. You all have a great weekend. It's going to be cold here in Georgia. 36, um, Apostle Charlotte is a sister who will be ordained an apostle with me on next Sunday. Uh, so she is in New York. So I'm quite sure their temperature is a little bit more chillier than ours. Mm -hmm. So um, if nothing else, thank y'all again. Have a great day, great weekend, and see you next time. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Uh -huh.